Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar video. This is going to be the first of three videos that I always do at the end of each year to uh, kind of round off the year. So this is going to be my top five Avatar and Korra story moments from 2021. Uh, later on in December, I will have my 2021 Avatar year in review and then right at the end of the year I will have my 2022 Avatar story and merchandise uh, preview video ahead of what the expectations are for next year. Before we get into the topic for this episode, the story moments, I just want to mention uh, once again that I do have YouTube channel membership enabled on my channel. If you press the join button under any of my videos or there's a link in the description of all my videos, you'll get access to this page where you can choose, if you want to, to join the channel as a channel member. I have two tiers available. You can see here they're called Light Spirit and Avatar. The Light Spirit is the kind of cheaper tier, but it gives you access to uh, a lot of cool things um, that will show up next to your name uh, in the comment section on videos as well as in live chats on any live streams that I do. So you'll see here I've got the kind of the blue arrow loyalty badges that will eventually over time evolve into the avatar state loyalty badge um, and then I have some cool uh, avatar emojis that I actually made myself that you can use again in the comments and in live chat and it's a good way to support the channel as well. The higher level tier, the avatar tier, it, the main extra perk there is that it gives you access to exclusive videos that I only put out uh, exclusive to YouTube channel members or members of my Patreon. Uh, of late, they have tended to be uh, video game videos, uh, so uh, I don't do them usually on my channel, so it's uh, one of your only real times to get to see me playing some video games. They include uh, I have some Destiny 2 videos up there. The most recent one was a Fortnite video, which was uh, very fun to do, because uh, it was my first time getting back into Fortnite since a lot of the updates they've done, like adding cars in and stuff like that. Um, and so on. There's like Rocket League. There's a lot of videos there in the backlog as well. Uh, and then you will also get uh, mentioned at the end of some of my videos uh, for supporting the channel, kind of a shout out type thing. So that's just again to mention that is there if you want to help support the channel and YouTube channel membership. But let's jump into the video and let's start with what story content actually came out this year that is actually kind of up for grabs here? What, what will the top five moments come from? So we got three pieces of new story content this year. The first one uh, earlier on in the year was Toph Bay Fong's Metal Bending Academy. The second of the three one shots, uh, the Awesome Ladies of Avatar trilogy. Um, the second book was the third of those uh, one-shots, which was Suki Alone, to round off our first one-shot trilogy. And then the sort of surprise of the year, we didn't really expect it uh, going into this year, but it came, happened, and was a surprise hit. The Free Comic Book Day 2021 book, which features two Avatar stories. We get a Legend of Korra story called Clearing the Air, and an Avatar story called Matcha Makers. So four stories across three books this year. Uh, I'm not going to include the extra new chapter that, that was included in the box set release of the Shadow of Kyoshi, just because I don't believe that chapter is really considered like canon because it's a deleted chapter, and um, so I won't be taking anything from that. All my moments will come from those three books. Uh, just to give some little commentary, some thoughts on the overall year. I do think this is also a major point to get into this year in terms of, I suppose, general feeling towards the story content this year was that the lack of a novel this year after having one for the last two years was really notable. I super felt this throughout the entire year. Not having that massive chunk of story content that was uh, notable, added a lot to the franchise. Um, super felt this year just w without it because everything else was basically a short story a one-shot story or you know very small short stories in the free comic book day book there was no 
big piece of story content this year as much as you know <laughs> we, we tried to hype up the new releases as much as possible uh suki alone which was definitely the best of the releases this year it didn't come close to some of the previous books that we have had and in a year where avatar studios was announced it felt really weird to see that the thing that was you know not doing as well in the franchise this year was actually the story content merchandise was crazy the popularity continued to grow because like you know it's, it's still on netflix just the general online growth spreading of you know avatars back type thing with the avatar studios announcement definitely you know hit throughout the year so much merchandise like there was actually a lot of books released but a lot of it was re reprint books and um, so it was very weird to see the year just not really have that much new story content and avatar studios seeming to actually have a negative impact on the story content it'll be a positive in in like a year or two when the new stuff you know we start to hear about it and it starts to come out properly but right now it seems like while they're organizing it we're in this kind of content drought that is kind of really frustrating um but we'll talk about this more uh, when we get through the uh, top five list so we'll start off as usual with an honorable mention uh, a moment that doesn't quite make the the top five it's not considered technically my sixth pick it's just something i thought that was worth mentioning from this content this year so it is we got to meet a new lava bender son who Toph is going to train. So it's from Toph Beifong's Metal Bending Academy. I think most people would acknowledge that getting to meet a new Lava Bender character was one of the most interesting things that happened in the story this year. The reason it's not number six or on the top five is that while it's cool to note that this happened, that's really about all you can do with this moment is that it's here, Toph wants to train this character and this is the kind of continue the the kind of finale of this arc within the book that this Toph being interested in helping a lava bender an earth bender with a new skill is something that makes her interested again it uh, gets her fired up to be interested in bending again after feeling that things have gotten a bit boring with the academy of late um so it's definitely the, this moment that i think highlights both the strength and weaknesses of Toph Beifong's Metal Bending Academy, that it introduced this really interesting concept, new Lava Bender character, but then ended right before the super interesting thing, which was Toph actually training Sun. So we don't get to see it. And I don't know about you guys, but I do not have a lot of confidence in the creators of the comics to come back to something like this. If they can't come back in five six years to the azula plot a massive plot that covers multiple comics if we can't return to that in that long what are the hopes that a one-shot comic with you know a newly introduced character is going to immediately be returned to it's interesting to think about interesting to consider but i did feel it was this very much point of like oh the book ends and i'm just like is there a part two no there's not it's the one shot are we going to come back to this unfortunately i don't think so so um lava bender hype but we didn't get to see much of it so that's the honorable mention number five on the list is from matcha makers from the free comic book day book the avatar story the spirit's force i wrote to go on a date with lee may so this is more or less the the, the part of the list where i considered putting just the entire comic matcha makers here but I wanted to actually give a moment from the story. So this is the representative from this book. This book was a pleasant surprise because it was treated more or less as being sort of the additional comic to the main headliner Korra comic. But it actually ended up really having an interesting story of its own and stood out on its own. I still think the core comic is slightly better because it just feels a little bit more kind of important and interesting. But they hit a really nice point with this comic of just this arc of Iroh thinking he's sort of too old to have something kind of fun and good happen to him like going out on a date with someone again and the spirits being the ones his friends the spirits being the ones to force him to actually 
accept this positive thing happening to him and i really like that it was like you see this kind of you know in a way like this kind of flaw of iroh just kind of like letting his age sort of get to him for a little bit but the spirit of all all characters to be the ones to really force his hand and i think it's best shown in the page i have up on screen here with that little green spirit about to tip that vase over until unless iroh actually asks her out uh, to dinner and that's exactly what he does and while it ends without you really knowing where things are going as such you get the impression he probably had a good time and uh, he can enjoy these happy moments as they come up in his life his age doesn't necessarily have to have a factor in that the other thing that i like about this moment was that it was one of the first times we've really seen sort of the Korra style spirits brought into more of an avatar setting that really helps to sort of bring everything together uh, more that we know iroh is spiritual from atla but outside of a handful of moments we never really saw it until Korra. so i like that being brought in that he can see spirits um and that there's more of a fun spirit thing happening in the ATLA era. So uh, very pleasant surprise that the other uh, part of that comic turned out just as well as the uh, main story. So that's my number five pick. Uh, number four, Toph and Chong discuss how your feelings towards the things you are passionate about change when they become your job. Uh, it was a tough kind of like scene to kind of sum up in just a sentence but i think that's about the best uh job i could do on it uh it's a rather kind of complex topic it's definitely the main sort of uh part of toff by fong's metal bending academy from a character perspective it's the the highlight scene is this is what it's about toff is bored with how things are going uh, at the academy and then when she is called basically like the man the establishment which is the opposite of who she was before she gets very frustrated by that she is shocked by how far things have changed Toph's story is basically that she had to have this very harsh training growing up because she had to train in secret in the underground illegal earth earth rumble tournaments and that's what forged her into someone as strong as she is um yet she's so successful with her academy that she has she barely has to play that much of a role it just functions so perfectly and she feels that nothing is a challenge to her and it takes chong's uh, story of his own kind of perspective on this same topic which is that he and his friends that are part of the band they love music and they had an incredible love for music you know while they were nomadic they just went around and they managed to turn it into something where they do make money from it and it does change how they kind of feel about it. it it because they have to be here and do this music here uh it takes away some of that you know kind of flow kind of from the situation the the love for the music as he sort of talks about um but he also brings up the sort of reverse situation of that is that don't just view it from a negative perspective that oh there's a little bit more serious now added to the thing that i like the most in life I make money from it and so he points out that while he loved how things were being nomadic with the music he didn't like having to sleep on uh, outdoors and like on the floor on the ground uh, all that time he appreciates how the position that he's found himself in now being successful with the music allows him to sleep indoors every night and the solution of course for chong is that the the change he makes is that they're not going to make all these appearances here and there they're going to be more nomadic but they have their own sort of you know you know camper van style thing where they have the kind of beds built into it and they could only do that with the music and it's just kind of highlighting that okay things are kind of different now but sort of embrace that change and you know you, you're successful use that change to your advantage and and it helps tough to see that okay the, her students don't have to go through the same sort of hardship that she did when she trained but that's a good thing you know it, it, it helped her become who she was that shouldn't be the case for anyone it probably shouldn't have been the case for her so her being able to help other people with her academy that is so successful so successful that she can sort of bring people in for free do the whole thing for free 
is a very positive thing. And I like that. I, I like that reflection in terms of the whole story just getting across that. Yeah, look look at this incredible thing that Toph built from the ground up, basically, and how successful it is. Um, it's, and obviously then her meeting a lava bender who does not know how to control their powers. Suddenly there's a, a true challenge for her that she can offer this person a place in the academy and she still has something to sort of, you know, feel excited about when it comes to bending. So it was a nice conversation and surprisingly good when you consider like Toph talking to Chong. Is that going to lead to a really insightful conversation? But it actually did. And it's definitely, I think, you know, the strongest character stuff from the book. Uh, I just don't think it was overall good enough in terms of like elevating the Toph comic to being, you know, one of the strongest books of the year or anything like that. So that's my number four pick. Number three, we go back over to the free comic book day book, but this time the Korra story. Here's its uh, point on the list. So clearing the air, I have everything about Tenzin's story in clearing the air, but if I had to choose just one moment, it probably would be Aang and Tenzin's talk on Appa. Um, I'll, I'll get back to that exact moment in a second, but just the overall gist of this story that the cover makes you believe it's going to be about like Iki and Janora arguing but then it's actually mostly about Tenzin's sort of an incident in Tenzin's past it has that sort of fun nostalgia factor to it of just we get to see the ATLA characters older like a little bit of Katara at the end Aang throughout Toph at the start we get to see Appa I think for the first time uh, during this era it's really really good and you get to see sort of the character evolution of here's what Tenzin was like when he was a teenager and that the little bits of sort of you see that he's he has sort of anger when he's like older you see it sort of more prevalent here when he like doesn't exactly know how to control it and so that's what gets him into trouble which leads into the scene that I picked here which is that uh, the pressure that he feels having to sort of live up to a certain standard to be the next leader of the air nomads that he feels that i think the, the, a moment like this what i did that's why i haven't earned my arrow tattoos i, I can't live up to this um and uh i feel like i you know i've let you down and just i'm being like no no you you, you haven't let me down you, you are doing an incredible job with this so far and i hate that all this pressure has to be put on you but you're doing a good job with it. It's, it's just a perfect kind of like dynamic that was needed. Whereas a lot of the discussion about, you know, Katara and Aang, his parents, you know, the, the kids growing up is often about, you know, Aang focused on Tenzin. But here's where you see sort of why that focus is needed because the second Tenzin is an airbender. He's always going to have that pressure on him to have to be the next Aang, to be the next leader. And so he needs Aang there by his side to kind of help him in these moments to show that you can do this and um, so i i like that a lot and, and this scene i think was really good from both characters ang and tenzin and even the bit that happens after this of like ang guiding them to the clearing the air process of how air nomads would typically work out a situation where there was a, a big disagreement was nice to the point where like Tenzin becomes friends with those boys after everything that happened. Just very, very fun comic. And the thing with both of those books, that those stories in the free comic is that they both delivered beyond way what, what we expected going in. Now, admittedly, part of that was because they did a pretty bad job with the marketing of the book on both stories in terms of getting across anything about what they were about and um, and arguably you could say they did a similar thing with Suki alone in terms of very much sort of burying the lead in terms of what's actually like important of note to fans but we'll get into Suki alone here number two on my list is going to be Suki's backstory throughout the book i uh, focusing here mainly on sort of scenes like the disagreement with Ming Jia that Suki and Mingxia have, as well as Mingxia's goodbye that happens shortly afterwards. Um, obviously, this is more of a one where it's like the whole backstory, which is quite a decent bit of the book, but uh, I really liked what this got across. Suki's backstory, 
it's not about this one sort of tragic incident, like, say, sort of, like, the way, like, Amon's backstory ends up going or something like that. It's more of just a general look into who Suki was before we, we got to meet her properly. And they, they play on just, I suppose, more of the dynamic of the backstory shows you Suki's relationship with one of her sisters, one of her best friends. And you're meant to contrast that with her relationship with this new friend, uh, Bayou, Bu, whichever way you want to say it, uh, in the prison. And how even though Suki has a big disagreement and they say their goodbye to each other, they don't see each other for a while, um, they're still able to meet again and still be that sisters forever, unbreakable bond dynamic. And it contrasts heavily with the fact that Suki tries to sort of be this way with most people and is very hurt and it's the thing that really brings her down to her lowest point when Biu actually betrays her in the book and I really like that but it also kind of shows you know that you know here's a flaw for Suki that she is the leader but she often is very quick to oh I've come up with an idea let's do it let's not discuss it because I'm the leader type thing. And she kind of walked a little bit over some of Ming Zha's ideas, which were quite good. And only after Ming Zha left did Suki realize that she had some really good ideas. That when it was put right in front of her, basically, that there's so much happening outside of Kyoshi Island. How can we possibly be isolationist when there's a war going on and everyone is needed? Um Suki realizes that in reflection, <laughs> Mingzhou had the right idea ahead of Suki and could realize that she was wrong and made the decision and a strong decision as the leader of the Kyoshi Warriors at that point, inspired by Mingzhou and meeting Team Avatar to go out on her own. And that's when they reunite and it's revealed that there are no hard feelings between the two. Suki's been beating herself up over how this went. But Ming Zha never was super upset about it with, with Suki. So I, I, I love how this went overall. Seeing just a younger Suki, seeing her look up to the other Kyoshi warriors. Even that was just a nice subtle little thing to highlight that Suki's always wanted to be a Kyoshi warrior. There's no complex story about it. She's always just looked up to them and has always been sort of the centerpiece, you know, the leader of her group. Makes sense as a brief explanation for, yeah, as a child she always wanted this and so that's what led her to become that in the future. So that's my number two pick. My number one pick also from Suki alone, probably the moment you expected in that from the story content this year, this was the one that I saw people talk about the most in terms of a big moment this year. And a lot of it is the Kyoshi hype because we've had two Kyoshi novels from before to the point where there's now a whole fandom based around the Kyoshi era. It very much is a third pillar in a way of the Avatar fandom that we have ATLA, Korra, and also Kyoshi era now just because of how amazing those novels are. So getting to see Kyoshi again in a kind of recent book was very cool. But I want to specifically in this kind of point here highlight that I'm not choosing this scene just because Avatar Kyoshi appears on like the final page. I'm choosing it because it's a strong character moment for Suki to have Kyoshi appear before her and the emotions surrounding how that came about, getting Suki to her, to her lowest moment, and also because of the Kyoshi hype. So there's two kind of reasons for why this is up here. And that's why I, I have like two pictures for this uh, one uh, my top point is to really highlight that the book takes its time to get to this point where Suki falls to her knees, starts to cry, and is at her lowest moment. Suki accepts that she is alone in the prison, having previously remained strong in front of Azula at the very start of the book, throughout her early time in the prison, even talking to the warden. But after finding out about uh, Bayou's betrayal, that's what breaks her down, in part because of what they did with the backstory and comparing one friendship to this friendship and how Bayou's betrayal both hurt Suki, but also hurt Suki's plan, which affected other people. And the fact that in sort of um, revealing her betrayal, she like mocked 
the whole idea of the kind of uh, Kyoshi warrior sisterhood type thing. All of that comes to a head to just break down Suki. And I love how they did it, that Suki has been using the sort of uh, Kyoshi warrior style meditation where they do the little martial arts kind of pose. That it, It's very fitting for Kyoshi that her her meditation sort of idea is is a little bit of martial arts stuff rather than being super peaceful. But it's a way that Suki and the other warriors remember that they train together. So when they do that uh, martial arts sequence, they always remember doing it with each other. And so we we have her remembering that throughout the whole book, which triggers the kind of backstory moments that we see. She does it after Biu's betrayal, but it doesn't work this time. And the emotions finally hit Suki like super hard and we get her at her lowest moment, crying, feeling like she is alone, that her sisters aren't around her. Team Avatar isn't there or coming for her. And this is what triggers the arrival of Kiyoshi at last. And it's a huge moment. It, it is a big moment. Yes, there are a lot of questions about on the technical level, how does this happen? Uh, and I would definitely, you know, still associate this with sort of Faith Aaron Hicks's uh, tendency to play a little bit fast and loose with continuity at times. But it is still a big moment. And I'm not going to let some of the complexities get in the way when it's still a bit of a dynamic that we don't know that much about. Uh, I did a whole video on this back when Suki Alone first came out, discussing it in a lot of detail, highlighting what the, the big problems are with it and potential solutions for it. Ultimately, I can appreciate this scene for what it is, but also be slightly critical of it for not making like the most sense, just because what is happening here is it is effectively, you know, Aang's spirit, effectively, or part of Aang's spirit, appearing before Suki with the idea that they're going for here is that because Kyoshi Warrior is a spirit, and I guess because Aang knows Suki, the spirit of Kyoshi is able to talk to uh, Suki. The problem is, is a lot of it is just the distance of like, Aang doesn't even know what's happened to Suki at this point, yet the spirit of Kyoshi does and appears before her to talk to her. You know, again, there's little bits and pieces that get in the way of it, but it's still a big moment. And I like that it's, that's all that's needed for Suki at this point. It's just for someone that she admires, looks up to, to just let her know that your friends have not abandoned you. They've not forgotten you. And just, it gives her that little spark of hope. And it helps to explain why when Sokka and Zuko find Suki, when they're looking down at her, she's not like completely broken at that point, but she's also not super confident. She's just in this sort of position of like, while I'm here, maybe someone will come for me, um, but it's not great. And after everything that's happened, you know, the, the these words of wisdom from Kyoshi are, are, are very good just to get that across. Um, and after all the Kyoshi hype, it was fantastic to, to see this moment actually happen. So there is my uh, all my moments uh, from my list. Uh, I'll just get into some final thoughts here before we sort of wrap up the video. So, the first thing here is just that the three books this year were good, but they were all ultimately short stories and relatively small in scale. Nothing hugely notable happened in the story content this year, which was very much felt, like I said at the start, because the previous two years had Kyoshi comics and they had at least some part of a three-part story happening. So we've lost kind of two things completely this year. The, one was sort of continuous storytelling and the other one was the, the big novels. And those two things being missing, it was impossible not for that to have an impact on overall how the stories were this year. The other point is that you need to remember again that the switch to one-shot stories for Avatar was already a sort of lowering of expectations for the level of story content that we're getting and not having any of the other stuff hit it did 2022 looking ahead needs to be better than this we need avatar and Korra comics and hopefully a novel the key is that the stories need to feel more important again avatar studios probably had some role in why this happened this year and 
might affect how the stories are going forward but they need to get back on track sooner rather than later because I don't think we can I don't think we can get through another year where it's this light on content when it should be much better and just to hit that point home really hard please just announce the next core comic we've been waiting so long for this to happen just to give the full details here runes of the empire part three came out february 2020 they've been teasing new Korra content since march 2020 so basically the month after the end of the last trilogy they were already sort of teasing like look ahead to new Korra stuff the interview that rachel roberts did where she says that looking ahead fans of both avatar and Korra will be pleased with what we have coming out basically well since then march 2020 to november 2021 the only Korra content from dark horse comics has been uh the art book reprints and the uh free comic book day book i get it that the big thing i suppose that happened in the meantime was announcing the one shot comics but that i i something has happened with Korra comics in the background and even since then in the months following that they basically confirmed there is a Korra comic trilogy that they're working on but it's just gone completely radio silent on that and while a month and a half ago they said you know announcements coming very very soon it's been a month and a half how does very very soon mean a month and a half going on two months i hope these announcements happen within the next few days the next few weeks and we know about them before the end of the year because the big problem is looking ahead to 2022 even if the book gets announced fairly recently or soon it will probably be a late 2022 release because we already have books announced effectively up to like sort of may june july just with where dark horse solicitations are so if they're going to announce a book now it's going to be for release in at earliest like say july august september because you also have to factor in that there's going to be delays because of printing delays and covid um so later the second half of 2022 is the release window that we're looking at for this book meaning that there's going to be in or around two and a half years between Cora proper Cora comic releases because the the free comics you have to treat as kind of being a little bit of a separate thing and that feels rather unacceptable and I think it has to happen because the other thing is that 2022 is going to be the 10 year anniversary of Cora's release so I think they have to have a Cora book it's just they haven't announced it yet and the communication has just been pretty terrible so the thing is like we'll look ahead more to how 2022 is going to look in the third of the the three videos that i'm going to be doing the 2022 preview and we'll talk a little bit about sort of overall how the news this year wasn't great in the 2021 review um but just in terms of story content directly it's hard to not talk about this year and also not talk about how bad communication has been about what's coming next as well um that the story content that we got was good but it came with not a lot of hope for what's happening next in that right now in terms of dark horse comics all we know is that chibi comic volume one and beast of the four nations will have some new content if it comes out next year other than that we're looking forward to what um the avatar legends role-playing game book and whatever new kind of lore content that has um announcements need to happen sooner rather than later for sure um so uh yeah that has basically been the video uh in the comment let me know what your thoughts were on my top five list uh how did you feel the year was what's your top five list is another thing of course to get across and then to end off i just want to thank some of my youtube channel members so a big thank you to my avatar tier channel members uh, cash d's martin monterosa and Brittany m thank you for supporting the channel so uh yeah other than that that has been the video thanks for watching and bye